Proper Madness, formerly Beautifully Broken. My name is Savvy and I give a unique perspective on mental health by providing tools, guidance, and knowledge on how we can better understand ourselves as well as our past and present experiences and in doing so, we can help heal our mental health. I get to speak with a variety of individuals from around the world as they share their stories from their journey through their mental wellness so that it helps others stand strong and use their voice. Today, I have Darren, who I have known for quite some time now, ever since I started Beautifully Broken. He's been there from the beginning, and we've always kept in touch, and he's become a good friend of mine. Um, So I've had the honor of having him on my podcast. That is cool, because we did start our page at the same time, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. So um, my one's a wee bit different from Sabi's, but it ties into mental health as well. Uh, I had a gambling addiction. So I started my page because no one else was doing it. And when I, well, there are people doing it, but not very many, whereas there's quite a lot of mental health and sobriety and, and you know drug addiction pages. Um, and I, I realized when I was going through my own problems with gambling, I could have done with some, uh, someone on social media, some peer support or someone that knows uh, what I was going through and to, to reach out to. So, yeah, so when I started my page, uh, Sabi was started hers at the same time and yeah. uh, we got to know each other through that. It was, a, it was a lot of fun. It was interesting to see what you were doing because I, I don't know anything about... Yeah, well, that's the point, isn't it? Because nobody knows anything about gambling addiction. It's called the invisible addiction or the hidden addiction because it's it's addiction you can't see, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's, it's a very personal, very private um very complex addiction so that's why i started the page um to you know reach out and support others but to also educate people on gambling addiction because there's there's such a huge stigma and a misunderstanding uh with it um where it started with me g was so in the uk we have a massive culture of gambling and for as long as I can remember, I've been surrounded by gambling. Uh, so I've got very vivid memories of um, being a kid in seaside arcades, claw machines, fruit machines, puggies, slots, mm-hmm. that sort of thing. Um, and uh, football. So football is huge here. I guess I should clarify that that's oh, soccer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. The mandatory clarification of that soccer. Um and uh, yeah, so I used to go watch my dad play football. Um, all the young lads there all had um, bed and slips on at the weekend. Mm-hmm. And I, I used to be the guy who would go around and take in the bed and slips and take in the money and, um, you know, and then nip on down and put the bets on. And it was always such a, a weekend, normal, uh, cultural thing for me. So I reckon the signs were probably already there at a young age that I could have had issues with gambling. Um, it was relatively under control and, and quite harmless to use that word very useless, uh, very loosely until um, they, we had our local bookshops. And I, I should explain this one as well, yeah. actually, because in the UK, wherever you go, especially in quite um, deprived working class areas, there's bookmaker shops where you can go in and place a bet. Um, and they just multiplied. Uh, God, but 10, 15 years ago, there was a massive boom. And what ended up happening was instead of going in to put on sports bets, which most people did, we now started getting the introduction of FOBTs and FOBTs are fixed odd betting terminals. Mm-hmm. So you're talking your, your roulette, your slots, uh, all your card games, all of these uh, machines. And um, the difference was you could, you could lose money very, very quickly because they're addictive by design. So people were going in, putting on sports bets, but before they were leaving, they were putting money into these machines. And that's when my uh, gambling became somewhat of a casual thing to very problematic very, very quickly. Oh, wow. um, and I, I went from putting you know, a £10 bet on at the weekend to spending all my wages and thousands of pounds. Uh, the worst, uh, people always want to know you know, how, what's the biggest uh, loss I had with gambling. And I always say it's irrelevant because the biggest loss you get with gambling is your, your mental health, mm-hmm. your loss of control, your feeling of self-worth, just uh, being very lonely, um, so many things. Um, and it's, it's, uh, 
yeah, a massive problem here in the UK. And it's going to become a massive problem. It already is by online betting uh, over in your neck of the woods in uh, yeah. the States. The, the online betting uh, over there is going to be massively, massively increasing because a lot of the states um, have, um, their gambling laws have been relaxed. So something to look out for. So it's quite timely coming on your podcast because it's uh, it's coming your way. It's already there, but you'll see it coming in a big way very soon. But on a personal level, online gambling is so, um, it's so hidden because you can do it via your phone or your mm-hmm. laptop. There's no affordability checks. There's yeah. no spending limits. You can um, gamble what you want. Um, you can, you know, at, at, over here we've we've recently banned credit card use, and that was a big one. Um, yeah. So you can you can max out a credit card in gambling. No one knows where you're doing it. No one knows how to safeguard. No one knows um, just exactly what, what mental space you're in. Um, you you know, people's families are ruined. Their relationships are ruined um, mm-hmm. because for a gambler to come out and ask for help, it really has to get to a low place um, yeah. because it gathers up steam pretty quick and um, people don't know where to turn or what to do. And um, yeah, there's a massive stigma involved. So that's a difficult either. It's, it's very complex. What are some of the stigmas that you face with, with gambling addictions? Well, people that don't understand it will tell you that just stop, you mm-hmm. know, just, just stop. What, you know, why just stop doing it? It's stupid. Why would you gamble what you can't afford? Um, doesn't work like that because when you're when you're gambling your your brain chemistry completely gets changed yeah. that's a that, that's a biggest thing that i try and explain to people because they feel that it's all their own fault when you get to a point where you're out of control with gambling it's no longer your own fault because you've, you've essentially rewired your brain and you have to go about fixing that wiring again mm-hmm. but every everybody's everybody's different in their approach to recovery with gambling so it's not going to be a one one size fits all at all um but I'm, I'm very big on mindset and growth and um, getting those things in place because that's what got me over the line. I tried to quit gambling so many times and I didn't know or didn't have a respect for that, didn't appreciate it. Um, and I didn't know where the gambling was coming from, why I was doing it and yeah. what, you know, why, why I was getting myself into such a mess. So it wasn't until I explored those things where and then it started to make a bit more sense to me and then I can move on um but for some people uh the, you know gambling for example could be um used to um treat trauma where mm-hmm. it's like they're, they're you know they're, they're holding something yeah deep inside them and in gambling I, I saw my gambling as a, a form of self-harm in some ways because I've got all these emotions in my head I don't know how to to deal with them and regulate them I don't know I, I, I hide from a lot of things and I found gambling was a way of just releasing a lot of stress you yeah know? um but it's 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 devastating because it doesn't it actually does does you worse you, you you begin to not feel anything when you're gambling when people first start gambling this is just to go back on the stigma thing some people think um oh people are greedy why mm-hmm. are they gambling they want more money everybody starts gambling because you know oh, we're looking for a jackpot or a big win yeah that, that that shit goes out the window really really quickly when you're a gambling addict you think of nothing you, you know money be- doesn't become money it just becomes a series of numbers yeah you become, you become very um you start to become very erratic and very um the gambler's mindset becomes very complex and it gets to a point where you feel nothing you just feel numbness you don't know why you're doing it but you can't stop doing it yeah. and you don't know where to go and how to stop do you think it's also a sense of control um if you feel very, very out of control in your life, do you feel that that's just something that you feel you can control or because sometimes I know with gambling, it doesn't go how you want. Right. So then it just keeps. It very rarely goes yeah. how you want it. Um, <laughs> it's yeah. I mean, I, I was a terrible gambler. I, I, I can't remember a big one for me. A lot of people start off with a big one mm-hmm. um, and that's the worst thing you could possibly do because you're always chasing that win again. Yeah. You know? But you, you, people don't, don't get there. Um, with gambling, you become completely out of control. There's no, uh, you know, you could be sitting there in the morning and it's the first thing you think of when you get up. It's the last thing you think of when you go to bed. But the, the thing with gambling is people can and do live very normal lives. You know, mm-hmm. it's like they will go to work. They can dust that off. They can carry on. They can put on a brave face. Um, but when they get home or on their way home, um, 
yeah, they, things spiral very, very quickly. What was the turning point for you when, when you hit rock bottom and you had to ask for help? Well, I was hiding it from my wife um, and I, I realized that my behavior was becoming more and more worrying in that I had, um, like I would, I would wait till after work to go to the bookies and spend all my money in there, you know, and then I would, you know, be on time to go for dinner and I I would, Mm -hmm. I would have everything sorted out, but I was trying to push it down and keep a a sense of control. Um, And there was a, a difficult time where I came into some money from a relative and I knew I stressed about it because I knew if I got this money in the, the headspace I was in, I was going to gamble it all. And um, it was my grandfather's money and he'd been, he kept it to one side for me. Um, and he says, if there comes a day where you need to buy a house or whatever, this will be a deposit. And um, I was just sitting there the whole time in the lead up to getting this money because we had to free it up because it was in stocks and bonds and whatnot. And I'm thinking, I don't know what I'm going to do here because as soon as that money hits my pocket, even though I don't want to, and I would never want to hurt my granddad in that way, I'm, I'm going to gamble that money. I know I'm going to gamble that money. Um, so I wanted to um, use that as an opportunity to safeguard my finances and tell someone and, and, and get rid of it. But no, so the money came into the account. I blew uh, five grand in one night on a roulette. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was just panicked because I, I knew there was more money to be blown. And I knew that was not only my future, but my, my, my wife's future. And I, uh, I went down to the bank that morning, just, just numb, not knowing really where, where to go with it. Sat at the bank and uh, the teller had said, I tried to withdraw all my money. And mm-hmm. he said, well, you can't because you, you've, you seem to have some uh, transactions here. And he flipped the screen around to show me. And I just had pages upon pages upon pages of gambling transactions, some of which I couldn't remember. Some sites I don't even know, like how long I've been a member for, what I've bet on. I had maybe, if I was to guess, because I looked this up recently and I stopped looking because it went so far back in my email. I reckon maybe at one point I had about 15, 20 betting sites I was gambling with. And because, you you know, gambling well this is a whole different topic we might get into later <laughs> but yeah, the, the gambling industry is not too kind you know so they'll bombard you with free offers and mm. emails and all the rest of you to to get you to get you to gambling um and I was just erratic and it went you know I mean I'd been doing that uh, slot casino type games for maybe about a year or two it just got to a point where I had uh, no connection with my feelings anymore I was hiding it I didn't know how to to handle it I didn't know where to turn because there's very, very little help. Went down to the bank that morning, tried to withdraw my money, didn't happen. Uh, called my mom, transferred the money over to her. Went home, burst into tears, told my wife that I'd uh, had problems with gambling and I don't really know what to do about it. So that was that was it for me. It was just a straw that broke the camel's back. If I wasn't forced to, to say, I wouldn't, yeah. you know, I'd probably still be gambling. It, sometimes it takes... Um, something like that. I mean, like, I think the, the big thing was a connection with my granddad, not wanting to let him down, and also just showing me the reality at the bank that morning, flipping the screen around, showing yeah. me what went wrong. You know, you kind of face to face with it, you have to make a decision, you know. Um, for you, what was the emotional trigger behind, you know, doing all that? Uh, it's, it's, I mean, I've explored, I, I get, I seem to get every few months, like another revelation where I'm like, ah, that probably makes sense. Oh, that's the reason why I was doing it. I mean, my dad gambles, you know, mm-hmm. and he's not been shy and shown me that over the years. Um, so, and in the exposure as a, as a kid um, as well to, to all that won't have helped. But I've, um, I got a diagnosis of ADHD um, and that massively helped because it was the first time I took an interest in my brain and my chemistry and how that works. And then it started to make sense because I find it very, very hard. It's, it's hard. It's actually hard for me to explain, but I, I'm my, you know, I know, um, I know myself so well now, but in my twenties, I, I had no idea, you know, so I'd, mm-hmm. I'd, I've been in some rough relationships and, you know, growing up in the northeast of Scotland yeah. and, I, you know, like I'd, I'd, all my friends were working and doing well in the oil and gas and earning some money and I'm in the failing family restaurant and, <laughs> you know, like I, underachieving, not really understanding why I'm underachieving, you know, too much drugs, too much, too much alcohol, mm. just wanting to leave, um, always sort of just... Um, not really knowing what I'm about, but always just always treading the line between between being, you know, in control and out of control and very impulsive. 
Um, and then I went traveling. I, I actually started gambling properly before I went traveling in my early 20s. Mm-hmm. But when I went away, I didn't gamble at all. Huh. And that was because I had stimulation, new places, yeah. new people, didn't have to think about gambling. It wasn't like that. As soon as I came back, I was straight back into it. But then I went away traveling again, didn't gamble at all. Same thing again. Mm-hmm. But then I moved to um, I moved to, to Germany. My wife's German and she would... Um, she'd be at uni during the days and I'd be working at nights mm. and I'd work in, you know, I'm working in restaurants and bars and I had a really terrible job and I got treated like shit and hardly got paid and it, it was just bad. And, but all day I had time and I was bored. I was unfulfilled because I didn't like my job. I didn't know anyone over there yet. So I just had too much time and not healthy outlets, you know? Um, and then I just gambled and gambled and gambled. And then by that point, you, you when you when especially casino games um slots and roulette so like my page is roulette out because roulette was my just my big big problem um you become conditioned and then it just plays in so all your un, unresolved mental health things and, and mm-hmm. all the things that's going on that you've not quite figured out yet and you need you need time and healthy sort of outlets to figure these things out and to explore um gambling just takes that all away from you um and, and then but but it also draws you in in the way that you it's like you, you want you want more you want more gambling you want more gambling and it got to a point with me and, and i try and explain this to people that i knew i was going to lose so yeah. i didn't I, did, I just didn't care i would i would spend every single penny on gambling knowing full well that i'm not likely to win so it's such a it's such a misunderstanding that people are chasing chasing a jackpot and chasing a big win that is true at the beginning. And that is true for many gamblers. I don't, I don't mm-hmm. want to speak for, for everyone. But for me, it was just um, it was just a, a means to um, it, it, it was just like a it's like a brain dump. I just want to do something that hits that little level of serotonin, hits yeah. that little buzz, but it also uh, and it was escapism, hiding from things, but also it does so much dam- damage damage and you've got the highs and you've got the lows and then with gambling you experience all that you experience all the excitement and then after you've you've done it because i've lost thousands just you know at a time of 500 pound uh, spins on roulette i've lost not having a lot of money because i'm you know living abroad and traveling and, and earning nothing just every single penny i had especially mm-hmm. cash and hand jobs and you just feel nothing you, you just feel just helpless numb and then that wears off 10 15 minutes later then you just become emotional because you you, you know and you feel how you, you feel stupid and you feel selfish and you feel out of control, yeah. but you don't know how to handle it so then yeah. you just become upset and then you repeat the process all over again as soon as you get money and it's just such a horrible a horrible cycle uh you mentioned that it was a form of escapism for you what were you trying to escape from I don't know. So that's the thing. So it, it, just to tie it back into um, the ADHD, because like I, I wanted to, I wanted to leave. I, I never wanted to move back home. So once I went traveling, I wanted to just keep going. And that I'm at my best when I'm, I'm challenged like that. I love adventures. I like to just keep moving. And you know, I like to. I'm, I'm always a really hard worker, and I, I do the best every job that I've got. But I, I was filling gaps in my life that I didn't know that why that they needed filled if you know what I mean so when like I'm filling gaps but I'm keeping going and it wasn't until I stopped and then gambling tied in I was like shit I'm actually doing I'm doing things I don't understand why I'm doing it I don't understand what I'm missing so I I, I had a job when I moved back to Edinburgh and um, my my management had picked up on my like attention to detail and the way that I did things was quite concerning. And also, can I just add that my attitude sucked in my 20s. I was very like, I was very anti, you know, mindset, (laughs) mindfulness and all the rest of it. And I just was like so pig headed and just probably wasn't a nice person to be around. And um, I was like, yeah, okay, so send me to some psychiatrist. That's fine. I'll show you. I'm going to HR and all this. Anyway, so I went to the psychiatrist and uh, not expecting him to say anything and actually be on my side. And he said, oh, you've got classic, classic ADHD. I'm glad that you came in. Um, I'm going to put you on, I'm going to put you on medication. It was like a bomb that went off because then I went, okay, that's probably why I do the things that I do. 
Mm. Now I'm going to start, I start, I became a life coach. I got coaching. I took an interest in meditation, hypnosis, reading, learning about addictions, all the rest of it. And it needed a whole package for me to, to, to learn about myself and explore things. Um, for me to be the relatively rounded person that I yeah. am now. Um, so I'm, I'm very aware of my limits and what my downfalls are, but I think I didn't, I didn't realize any of this at the time um, when I was younger. And now I'm, I'm in a position where I've got the right tools and if I need to go back and uh, use them again, I can. I think that's a difference. Yeah. Uh, whereas some people just don't, they don't know where to turn because they don't even know where to start. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, and, and you know, and what I will also say, these are my experiences. So yeah. for anyone that's struggling with gambling out there, like go and seek professional help because <laughs> everything that I'm saying is based purely off my own experience. But what I am saying, what helped for me was just taking a, a more rounded uh, approach to things and exploring mm -hmm. different avenues instead of shutting doors uh, myself that I'd done for many, many years. Yeah. Um, so what was the what was the recovery process like for the addiction and what did you find the most helpful for you? See, I, I think I did things the wrong way around. So what was helpful for me was to get the life coaching. I, I, there was a girl at my work that was going through a qualification and uh, she had said, if you want some free coaching, you can. And again, this was another thing I scoffed at and went, oh, okay, life coaching, sure, that'll help. But that, that really was the, the catalyst to move me on because I had a breakthrough maybe about two, about two, three weeks in. And because I wasn't expecting it, it kind of blew my mind a wee bit. And, and from that day on, things became so much easier because I realized the power of coaching and um, really putting yourself in the spotlight there. Um, so that helped because then I went, well, I want to do this. And then when I want to do this, then I started meeting more people in that kind of, you know, that kind of area and then started looking into counseling and coaching and all the rest of it. So I, I started to build uh, some healthy relationships and some um, just some good coping strategies and tools. And, and that was helpful because it made things easier um, because I kept adding more tools to my arsenal. So if I ever was struggling, because gambling, gambling does like it, it it's hard. It, it really is hard. It, it's it, it keeps drawing you back in. It takes months and years and sometimes forever uh, to really, um, you know, get that itch away because it's yeah. it's it's, you know, it, it's buried deep in your head. I, I try and explain to people it's like, a you know, like a, a burning ember in mm -hmm. your head. They could burst into flames at any time, you know, so you've got to be really careful about how you fuel that fire. So yeah. you just be just be mindful that that ember, however small, is always in your head, and you've just got to you know, keep the flames dampened down. Yeah, that's what it feels like for me. Um, but as the as the months and the years pass, it does get easier. Um, but I, it's 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 it takes a lot of hard work, um, a lot of persistence, and, and and it takes support. You've got to tell someone about your gambling. Um, mm -hmm. Once I'd opened out about it and was completely transparent about and honest about all my experiences that made it really easy because people then come to you they tell you your story uh, tell you their story and um it, it gives you that we catalyst it to keep going and, and you know keep giving back as well because i've not met one single gambler who uh, has given up and doesn't want to give back yeah. they all want to give back because they understand just how complex and lonely and isolating their addiction was and now that they've told people they want to tell everyone because they want to help others because they understand that yeah. people are so hidden. Yeah, because my, my whole idea was to just get everything down on Instagram or wherever and be like, right, and you know what I'll do? It's been four years since I've placed a bet. I'm done with gambling. Um, I'll get it all down. And then people can use that as a resource. And then I'll never talk about or think about gambling ever again. That was my idea. And gee whiz, like, that is not what's happened <laughs> at all. <laughs> Because what, what's happened instead is I've put everything down. I've met all these connections and all these people that have got previous gambling uh, addictions. And I'm now learning. I'm really in the deep end with uh, what's going on here in the UK. Um, and I've just met all this this amazing online community. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you know what was funny about the whole thing? I didn't know anyone was doing that online at all. I didn't know anyone was talking about this online. Um, and then to all of a sudden just meet all these people that have they've got such a close bond um and you know and everyone it's so nice we're all very supportive of each other it's so nice to see more pages coming up now yeah. um people sharing their stories especially on twitter there's a lot a lot of people on twitter talking about gambling what um uh, what do you find is the most um 
I don't know, the most eye-opening thing that you've discovered with seeing all these other people come together as a community? Just the strength, the, the, the strength of the community is unreal. Um, you know, we, we, we face barriers every single day. Um, people are scared. They, they're scared to talk about their gambling. You know, they don't want their, you know, some workplaces won't understand. Um, you know, some the family might not understand. It's because it's, it's we gambling there. It's just, it's, it's just a, it, it's not just a gambler as well. It's the affected others. You know, it's a, gambling doesn't just hurt the person. It hurts everyone around them. Um, and it's, it takes a, a, a lot of balls to, to step up and, and share your story. And, the, the way that the, the press is in the UK as well, it's like they, they want to know it's all kind of it's getting better. But a lot of it's like, you know, man stole 20 grand from his work to, to fund gambling addiction. Everybody's so if they're just tarred with such a horrible brush here where it should be that, you know, we need more support and more mm -hmm. help and more awareness because the reality is we've got not much going on here at all. And, and the support that we do have is very um, uh, I'm not going to go down down this one because <laughs> it's a whole different thing. But I've not got a lot of love for the industry and the way it's funded in this country. Let me just tell you that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the the, the 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 strength and the the support and how um, how we've all got that one thing in common. So we've all got the, the thing with gambling takes all sorts. You know, mm -hmm. all different backgrounds, all different ages. Anyone can become addicted to gambling, and. Um, yeah, just to see the community um, come together, it, it keeps me going because I, I find it exhausting at times talking about this uh, every day because my life is just work and then I come home and then gambling stuff. And, you know, I will do that all day, every day if I need to, if it's someone reaching out um, and looking for support and help, you know, my inbox is always open. Anyone can contact me anytime. But what I didn't, what I didn't uh, think of was just how, um, you know, it's a, a Pandora's box here. You know, it's like I've opened some door and it's like, right now there's so many things I did not know that's been happening, you know, in, in really bad things for the last, you know, however many years and it needs to change. So we're going through a, a, a transitional period in the UK just now where our gambling mm -hmm. laws are getting reviewed this year. So there's there's quite a lot of us um, chipping in together and campaigning and trying to get get the right things done here to protect uh, future generations really um and everyone else but it's spe specifically the future generations coming after us because the digital age is uh just a perfect breeding ground for gambling addicts that's for yeah sure. is there anything specifically that helps you get through those itches those moments i'm sure i'm sure the recovery process is still going for you right do you have something you're passionate about that helps take you away from it that you do it's 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 just keeping busy um and not in knowing that the, the 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 pitfalls that were there before they don't have power over me anymore that's mm -hmm. the thing so if I, once you learn more about gambling in the gambling industry um they don't hold power over you um and you get to a point where you're in a good place um where um you can expose yourself to to everything and, and not feel um, not feel tempted. However, what I, what I will say is, and I was talking about that burning ember earlier, you know, I had a moment, you know, I'm six years without a bet. Mm -hmm. And this was um, about a month ago. I was sitting uh, here, obviously, because it's been locked down all year, not doing much <laughs> else. And uh, some guy had posted his um, football accumulator online. So he was showing the bets he had on and he was saying that he only needed one or two teams to come in to win a bet. And automatically what I was watching the same game of football that he was but because I had seen his bet I knew exactly what he needed for that bet to come through and I went from enjoying a game of football game of soccer sorry um, no, you're good. to to completely transfer back into the gambler's mindset and what you get instantly is anxiety stress you you, you you're watching a different game now because now you're you're waiting for someone to get yellow carded you're waiting for a corner you're waiting for a goal scorer in my heart was just pounding because it just took me right back to, to that gambler's mindset. So you've got to be careful. But in terms of coping strategies, I, I for me, I, I'm really missing the gym and exercise and mm -hmm. things this year because I find it hard to, to motivate myself at home. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I need I need to be in a different location and, and be forced to, yeah. to exercise. Um, I try and have positive conversations. I try and keep a positive mindset. I try very hard um, to keep on top of everything because I, I, I go through spells and phases throughout the year where my mental health might be not that great or you know I'm feeling better some days. But 
as I said to you, I think just having a fuller understanding of what's going on in my head really does help because yeah. I can see things coming. I know how to to deal with them. So I've got, as I said, I've got these tools in my arsenal and they're not big. It's small things that make big differences, mm-hmm. you know? So it, it, it's all very cliched things that people talk about you know, a thousand times over, but it is, it is true, you know, when you're feeling down, go out for the go outside and pick up the phone and all these kind of things do help. Um, but no, it, what I will say is I'm not... Um, I'm not tempted to gamble anymore, yeah. um, which is a good place to be. But you've just always got to be to be wary that it's probably always going to be there, um, and to take the relative, you know, the the precautions that you need to do, um, and not expose yourself to, and keep talking. You know, gamblers gamblers went through their whole lives not talking, they're telling mm-hmm. anyone, and putting on a putting on a facade, and then yeah. Well, I think once you start talking and getting that support, you just got to keep it up, really. Yeah. Um, do you find, I know, do you follow any other addiction pages and do you ever find any similarities with any of them? Yeah, for sure. That's, that's a thing. So when I, when I went on Instagram and I realized there was one other gambling page, so I was like, okay, um, right. I need to be doing this now. Um, but then I started, you know, um, adding mental health pages and drug recovery pages and alcohol. Um, and it's so, so similar. Mm -hmm. That's a thing, you know, I think gambling needs a seat at the table here because yeah. like it, there's so many similarities between them all. It's unreal, especially the I noticed with the, the sober accounts. Um, every time I you know I read a lot of the sober posts, and I'm like, yeah, I mean, you can you can change this word there and that word there, and it could be totally relate to gambling. Yeah. Um, especially in like an advertising um, side of things as well. So like you you'll you'll notice now what well, you're going to start to notice, as I said, um, all the gambling ads coming in the states. They're yeah. there now, but you're going to notice them more. It's the same here in the UK with alcohol ads. I mean, we've got uh, we've got some tight regulation on alcohol advertising, but if you're a recovering alcoholic, it's everywhere here. You know, there's yeah. a culture of drinking, and it's uh, it's treated like everything's uh, you know, you need a glass of wine with this and <laughs> this and that, and it's it's just it's just ridiculous. It's um, I'm 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 far more aware of um, what might be triggering for for people than I was before, mm-hmm. um, and I'm I'm totally aware of what the um, just the social complexities with drinking and drugs as, as well is um so yeah no instagram's really open my eyes and you know and it, people are people are willing to chat and and learn about i'm i'm, I'm really keen and interested now especially with alcohol because yeah. I, I i drink but not as much as i should and i definitely i've definitely noticed and it's no coincidence that since i've started my instagram page i've I very rarely, um, well, I do drink, but I'm not, I'm not as out of control and <laughs> erratic and crazy as I was before, because I just feel that I've got, I've taken a lot of the good things from getting over gambling and I've managed to transfer that to, mm-hmm. to alcohol, I think. Because I think I originally started my page with, with the tie-in of sobriety. So then as soon as you, like you said, once you figure out what's going on up here in your head, it's a lot easier for you to look at the big pic the big picture and see how everything else in your life you know kind of marries all of that well that's it you you know if you're if you're not solving the root of the problem you're just moving on to something else to fill Mm -hmm. that void aren't you that's why i found yeah the gambling it's like you know you're you're not solid and if you don't know what that problem is or how to really um you know you might know what the problem is but if you've not explored it in a way you've not had the help or the, the ability to really flesh things out then yeah, you're gonna fill it with something. I'm, I was the same as well with uh, the gym, and yeah, you know, it's like whatever gives me a wee high, you know, mm-hmm. and then that's that, that's what I'll go for. So it was the same with drugs, it's the same with booze, same with the gym. Yeah. I mean, it's the same with social media. I mean, I'm very very aware of how much time I spend on social media. Oh, I remember you telling me that you a few times, you're like, hey, I'm gonna disappear because I just can't. You be have to, yeah. 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 You got it, and it, it, that's no knock on anyone contacting my page. I, mm-hmm. I love people reaching out, but it's nothing to do with that. It's 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 everything else. It's like you've got that, and then you've got um, just the stuff I'm involved with, with, with campaigning uh, just now, and then it just becomes too much yeah. uh, very quickly, and especially during lockdown um, when you don't have a holiday to look forward to, or you know, it's, it's the same every single day. It's it's difficult because you, you the, the one thing I'm very um, I'm I'm very routine and I have to be routine. If my routine gets shaken up, it's just it's it's not good. That happened yesterday actually. Really? We've got, yeah, we've got um, <laughs> we've got a couple um that we're, we're we're friends with and it was her birthday and I came home from work. I've been working all week and I'm exhausted because the work that I do is quite intense as well. And um they were waiting outside and they were like, Oh, we're going for a walk. Do you want to come? 
and then all of a sudden it's like uh, uh no and you know and like, like maybe maybe during normal times i'm like yeah I'll, I'll go for a walk yeah i'll do that i just freaked out you know mm-hmm. and then i felt like i can and then i just shut down and then people think i'm rude or i'm not talking or i'm quiet I'm like, there's something wrong with me but i don't know how to express myself in a way that's uh you know friendly i don't have that kind of ah, just smile and yeah yeah I'm, I'm not like that at all it's very very clear when there's something wrong with me yeah. so um so often you know, i'm off on this walk and the whole time literally my anxiety is through the roof but no one would know and all it is is because it's something happened i didn't expect and i wasn't able to deal with it i didn't have a chance to to, to get my head around it if i knew that was happening at the end of the day it would have been absolutely fine mm-hmm. uh, but because just and i wasn't i had no other plans it's just a case of okay just when something gets dropped on you like that, it's it's my brain just it doesn't know how to handle it. I get very, I read something the other day um, on Instagram. It was like, oh, ADHD, um, someone had described it as constantly feeling chronically overwhelmed. Hmm. And I was like, okay, that pretty much sums me up. I do feel chronically overwhelmed where I'm just yeah. sort of go, getting through, <laughs> getting through <laughs> things all the time, you know? And yeah. you crash, just to tie into social media, you crash and burn, you know, you become very like, oh God, what's you just just the impulsive behavior is very similar to gambling mm. so your likes and your reshares and all this stuff it yeah. feels very similar to gambling because gambling so fast-paced and the reward systems are so fast-paced mm-hmm. and it's the same with social media and i recognize that very early on so what i do is i try not to get to a point where i burn myself out and i take mm. breaks but it really takes me to walk away for like a month or so just yeah. to get the reset button that's how long it takes you know? yeah How's your podcast going? <laughs> podcast is going. Podcast, actually, you know what? It's funny you say the social media thing, because with my podcast, I have to be careful not to get obsessive um, mm-hmm. yeah. and not to get tied into compare mode. Um, Aye, that's, uh, you yeah. learn that, don't you? Yeah. yeah, and it can become an addiction in and of itself, because now I find myself... I'm very, I can get hyper-focused on one thing. And that's where my, my addiction issues stem from is that hyper-focus, but I, th- I think comes from ADHD as well. Like once you're fixated on something, you're fixated and you can't, it's like you have horse blenders on. Yeah. Like this light that's shining in my eyes just now. Hold on. <laughs> let me, let me close that. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I, I, no, I, I totally can relate to that. Yeah. It's a, uh, my hype man, you know, I didn't know that I would hyper-focus on things until my, my dad is my best friend. Um, and he'll every so often, if I ask for advice, he'll give it to me. But sometimes if, even if I don't ask for it, he'll just say something. He's from the UK. So, oh, cool. Yeah. He's very straightforward, very direct. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, doesn't mess around. Um, but so he said to me the other day, he goes, Sabi, sometimes you just hyper-focus on stuff. I go, no, no, I don't. I go, whatever. And I just ignored it. Then slowly started realizing, oh shit, no, no, I do. I'll just get so focused on one thing. I don't look at everything else around it. Mm-hmm. And so my addic- my addictive behavior does stem from that. If there's something going on in my life, I will only focus on that. And if it's something that I can't solve or can't figure out, I will find a way to figure it out so that I can have that, almost like that dopamine release of, mm-hmm. oh, okay, everything's fine now. Um, so fighting through that constantly for me is difficult. Because in life, there's no guarantee of what's not going to happen, what's going to happen. Um, and you kind of have to be okay with something happening out of, outside of your control. Um, and then not turning to something to help with that dopamine release. So for me, it's the podcast thing. Like I put, I put so much out. And so I'm like almost waiting. Like I look at my stats all the time. Um, and I'm like sitting there waiting for that dopamine release of, okay, when is it going to take off? As silly yeah. as that sounds, um, even with my Instagram, social media, with YouTube, with YouTube, I find I just go into a state of avoidance. I'll just look look and see that I'm like, oh, okay, well, I'm not gaining this, this, and this. And so I don't have that dopamine release. But then the second I gain a new subscriber or I get more likes or more views or something, then I have that dopamine release, but then I want more. So it's it's a funky thing that I have to keep an eye on. Yeah, no, totally. And, and you know what? And then you start to, to become very self-critical because it's like, 
I'm, you know, I'm, I'm literally just talking about my own experiences. So there's nothing to be, yeah. I, there's no comparison to be had, you know, it's all unique to everyone else. You know, if I do a video and it doesn't, <laughs> no one likes it, and I do a video and then someone does, it, when I first started this, I started comparing, like, so what, what was different there that I, <laughs> I was talking about there? Did people know what I'm talking about? Well, what? And then I'm just thinking it's silly. And then I go, oh, but it takes time because, mm -hmm. again, social media is like gambling that way. It sucks you in. They want you to think yeah. that way. And then you start reading into all the, the bullshit. So I didn't ask if I could swear in your podcast, by the way. No, <laughs> I've, I've done mean, a few times. Really? I'm half English. There's no... Right, half. okay, cool. <laughs> I'll, I'll, keep, I'll keep it to shit and nothing else. Okay, so... um. Yeah, and then you start reading articles and whatnot, and it's like how to build your page, or whatever. I'm like, and then it, I remind myself all the time, it's like it's not what I'm in this for, what I'm doing. It genuinely is. It's nice if my page looks good and people can find it, yeah. but the, the the message is the main main thing and the important thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, and I still stand by that. One day I want to just put everything on there and then walk away from it. But I want to I, I want to do what I'm doing um you know as a job. I want to support people. That's all I've been doing. My, you know, most of my work in life is supporting people. Um so I want to I'm using this as a as a platform to learn and and to, to see where I go and make connections and and um get the message out there. But yeah, it, it's so hard when your your mind's getting muddied by all this other nonsense that comes mm -hmm. along with it. And it's it's just hard to navigate those waters. Yeah. Um the last question I have for you, and I do this at the end of every podcast, is if there's anyone out there who resonates with your story or what you've been through, what would you tell them? Oh, God. What would I tell them that resonates with my story? Um, oh, well, you know, again, this is cliched, but it's so, so true for gambling. You, you're really not alone, honestly. Mm -hmm. it's, it's You feel like you're on your own uh, when you're going through it. Um, because, you know, the, the, the films and media will make you think that everyone's around the blackjack table in Vegas having the time of their life, you know, high rolling, um, making friends. But it's not like that at all. Uh, the majority of gamblers are very isolated, lonely, sad figures that need help. Um, you're not alone. Reach out, ask for support. People will understand your story. And um, if you reach out to me personally, if I ever can't help you, um, I've all, I'll always have someone to say, but if, if I can't help you specifically with your problem, I know people that can. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll point you in the right direction. So reach out for support, um, professional support, as I said, you know, if you, if you, if you need to follow those avenues, go down there too. Um, but uh, in terms of social media, there, there are people that do understand. So get on board and we'll, I'll do my best to help you out. Well, um, I appreciate you coming on here and, and talking about your experience and your story and everything you've been through. This is very eye opening for me because I didn't know anything about it. Um, but now it makes me more interested in it. And I'm definitely going to see your contact content very differently now. Um, yeah. Um, thanks for having me on. I better plug my page uh, because it's. Yeah. That's it's what I was going to ask you to do that. Yeah. Yeah. It's a play on words. So it's, it's a rule it out. So it's R U L E underscore E W T E underscore. O-U-T and that's on Instagram and uh, all my videos are on YouTube as well but so that's what uh, my Instagram videos are all mostly a minute or, or less so they're all small tips you know small little support tips that you can digest um, but I do have some longer form videos and I've got uh, a blog as well that you can you can check out where I kind of delve deeper into a lot of the bigger bigger things and then for uh, all my listeners out there I'll link all his information in the bio of this of this podcast so you'll be able to find him thank you so much for listening and remember you have to go through the eye of the storm to see the clear horizon ahead thanks so much guys and i'll see you next week